Good evening guys, I'm posting two videos today. Initially it was just going to be Brady and Bucks winning it all, but I'm so energised after the opening game that I managed to crank out this video as well. But I'm posting this video first. So let's hear what everyone has to say after the Bucks beat the Cowboys. Brady comes through, 49th career game winning drive in the fourth quarter overtime, five shy of Peyton Manning for the most since the 70 merger. Peyton can't add to that since he's now doing Monday night stuff for us. Breck, Bucks extend their franchise record victory, winning streak to uh, nine straight. How for you personally, mean? how much different do you feel? How much more comfortable are you today versus week one last year and 18 months ago? Yeah, a lot. Well, um, last year sucked after the first game. Let me say that. That was come a long way uh, from 365 days ago. Uh, that was a pretty lonely feeling after the game there in the Superdome. But, um, you know, again, we won. It's great. But, you know, we know that it was a, a far from perfect and we've got to get back to work and clean a lot of stuff up. Everyone knows not to leave too much time on the clock when you're playing against Brady. The problem is, whatever time you leave, it's going to be too much time for Brady anyway. He's done it so many times. Even Joe Montana said, don't give Brady the ball in the last minute. Don't give him a chance to get in the game because he will beat you. Also, I thought the chemistry between AB and Brady was absolutely magical. Now we know Brady and Gronk are a perfect match. They read each other's mind, they trust one another, and they get the job done. But the way Brady connected with AB in this game, I thought was so sweet. Uh, I'm looking at the box score in front of me. I'm going to get to some things I'm curious about. We start with, with as we're watching this, it's good you take the lead, but, I mean, how helpless a feeling is it when you know that Brady's getting the ball back with that kind of time? Yeah, listen, before that, who needs preseason? Right. I mean, think about that. These guys just came out there and were just slinging all over the field. But, it, listen, you're absolutely right. We're sitting there watching the game, and, and Dak is doing his thing, and, I'm, and, I, and we're both thinking, you've left too much time for, for 12. Yep. We've seen this script time and time again throughout his career where teams leave him, mm -hmm. you know, minute, minute and a half, and he just goes down, drives down the field, ends up winning the ball game, and that's what, exactly what played out in this particular game. You know what's really interesting as we watch these highlights, and Godwin gets the big catch there, but, but Antonio Brown was enormous in this game. Oh. Rob Gronkowski, enormous in this game. Brown, we know how things went after Pittsburgh. It, things got really, really bad for him. He's been there now for a while. Gronkowski was, was doing who knows what. He gave, he gave up football. And it's, now that this Tampa Bay team has been together, for a full off season and had an off season to work after winning the Super Bowl, what do you think, Damian, they can become as they get even more familiar with one another? Well, I think this team can be really scary because we saw remnants of the old AB, Antonio Brown, who was like the best receiver in football. That's what we saw a glimpse of tonight. And then obviously we turned back the clock with Rob Gronkowski. Mm -hmm. So you add that with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans and all the other weapons, Leonard Fournette. Right. Well, that's a lot for defensive coordinators to try to stop on a weekly basis. We don't want to be in a lot of situations like that, but anytime you're a quarterback, TB12, you know, you got an opportunity to come rally back. What was going through your mind there on that final drive? Coach Arian said he had no doubt in his mind you guys yeah. were going to go down and win this, this ball game. Well, we've been working on our two-minute game. Uh, as soon as the situation presented itself, Tom, we let the guys know we're going to be in two-minute mode. And, you know, we've been in that situation before at training camp throughout the year, so... It's great to see it come alive today in the stadium. A couple times a week in training camp, it was basically every day for a week straight. And we were finishing with the two minute drill. And uh, just, you know, just the way he keeps himself posed and just finds the open guy where they need to be, it was just fantastic. You know, we've worked hard on our two minutes. So it really comes down to execution. And sometimes we're going to need it. And you never know when you're going to need it. Before the end of the half, we used a Hail Mary tonight. That was the first time I'd used a Hail Mary here. Um, we had a few last. End of the game situations that we were trying to just kill some clock and throw the ball out of bounds. So, you know, situationally, a lot of things are coming up. And, um, you know, we just got to be on top of things. And, you know, you got to string together a lot of communication about um, these critical moments and how to make the important plays when you need to. And I think the important part about the last drive of the game was, you know, we executed some really good plays at the right moment. And um, it, was, it was great to see. It's going to give us a lot of confidence. Do you feel like some people are, are sleeping on you a little bit? Just keep him asleep. <laughs> no one likes to be waking up, right? There's obviously a lot to clean up, but um, 
you know, I have confidence in all those guys. You know, I've been here, you know, 18 months now. So I've had a lot of time with Chris and Mike and uh, Scotty, Tyler, um, OJ and Cam, obviously with, with uh, AB and Gronk and then, uh, you know, the backs. So we, we've not a perfect game. There's obviously a lot to kind of unpack from this one, but um, it's a good football team. You know, they, they have a really good offense. They, they have a, you know, very sound defense. They have a lot of good players on defense. So um, it's a good team. We're going to have to, uh, you know, we're, we, we obviously got a lot to clean up. Start of the game, love the finish. Our guys are winners. They're going to finish and they're going to win. But we can play better and not put ourselves in that, in that situation. Obviously, the turnovers, uh, the penalties, things we can improve on. But, but our guys fought to, and won the game. And uh, special teams were outstanding. I thought special teams won the game for us today. Uh, Mick did a hell of a job. Kickers did a great job. Offense and defense had spurts. Nothing that I was wanting to see, but uh, stuff we can work on. Hey, Tom, on that second touchdown to Rob where he released and, and then went over, was that improvised? Was that the yeah. design? No, that was uh, not the design. So there was a lot of things that were off on that play. But one of, one of, some, one of a few where we just quite didn't execute things the way that we were hoping and um, – you know, I'm glad we made the play, but again, it's you can't live on those. And I think, you know, the margin of error is thin in the NFL. And, you know, one or two plays, it's always that's the way the game goes. And uh, fortunately, we found a way to win. And I'm really happy Ryan and the field goal team made that really clutch kick there at the end. That was great to see. Um, special teams was just awesome tonight. Hey, Ron, uh, Tom was just saying that that second touchdown was not by design. It looked like you, you blocked and then you released as he was you know, improvising a little bit. Can you walk us through what you were thinking yeah. on that play? Yeah, I know. I don't like to give away that play. That's my favorite play. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Tom made a great call. Uh, I think I was actually on a route, and then he checked me into blocking, and he checked me into blocking and then releasing. And I was like... Oh man, he just he just sees it all on the field. It's impressive. I mean, you guys have been playing for, you know, like 80 years, seen every defense, seen every player, uh, you know, played with so many, he, and just sees, you know, so many fronts too. So he saw it, he read it well. Uh, you know, it's a play we've scored a couple of tugs on in our in our, in our career. So, uh, but no more talking about that play because I I like that play. I don't like anyone knowing about it. I only got to see bits and pieces of this game and I'll watch the full replay tomorrow when the weekend comes because it's Friday morning when the game starts here. It actually starts at 10.20 a.m. on Friday morning in Australia. So I was at work and constantly having to do sneak peeks of the game. But I thought Dak deserves his flowers. He played really well. His arm looked fine. I didn't see him run much either. That may actually be the key to the Cowboys winning more games. Dak not running and just focus on throwing the ball like Brady does. The Cowboys played a great game. I actually thought they were going to lose by double digits, but they proved me wrong. Well done, fellas. Tom Brady's 44 years old. <laughs> I mean, I was joking with Tim Hasselbeck last night. I mean, it's Benjamin like, Button, right? What, say again? Benjamin Button? Something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Like, yeah. he, he refuses to age. I just, I don't even know how, what the question is other than I mean, you play with him back in the day. I just, what do you make of his level of commitment to being what he is, which is, I don't know, this this dude. I've never seen anything like it. Right. Re I really, I mean, I think when you're at this level, there's only a few guys that that's able to sustain and, and take it to the level that Tom Brady's at. And I'm thinking, you know, all time grace, the, you know, the, the Jordans, the Tigers, you know, th that's the that's the rare area that Tom Brady is in. And, and where I want to follow here is this. You, you've you get you've seen it. You got the the accolades, you, the ring, the money, and this and that. You can't pretend to be hungry, right? No. I don't understand where the hunger comes from. Like I feel the same way about Nick Saban. H how do you not wake up and just finally go? You know what I'm going to do? Something else because I'm good. You know I just don't understand how you maintain the level of hunger for something you've already done so often. Well, that's what separates guys from Tom, like Tom Brady, from everyone else. Uh -huh. Because what happens is. Most professional athletes, once they taste that success, right. they get complacent. That's what I'm saying. He's not complacent. <laughs> like, he still has the chip on his shoulder, that edge from being the sixth round, 199th pick in the NFL right. draft. So, 
it's just remarkable watching Tom at the age that he's at, being able to being able to just again sling the ball all over the field tonight. I guess that's the difference between. The, the, see, to me, the couch is comfortable. For him, being in the arena is what's comfortable, and he he and the Buccaneers get the victory. Your secondary was depleted, decimated. What did they show you tonight? <laughs> uh, a lot of heart, a lot of heart, and uh, you know, Ad, Ad, Andrew Adams just got here. Uh, the other day, he's out there playing when Mike cramped up, and uh, I think Sean's going to be okay. He's a dislocated elbow, but I think he's going to be all right. Thank goodness Sean Murphy bunting is going to be okay. The way his arm was caught in that tackle, it really didn't look good. Um, and, uh, but those guys, they battled. They battled. Dean had a rough night, and, uh, but Dean's a hell of a player, so he bounced back. He made some big plays down the stretch soon. Coach, you talked about the confidence that you had and, and the team had to come back and, and win that game. How much do you think that confidence and that cohesion of playing together and having everybody together is going to take you as far as you want to go this season? Yeah, I, I think in tight ball games we, we have a ton of confidence, you know. But for me, just don't put ourselves in that situation, you know. Let's let's play better and have that 14 point lead we should have had instead of fumbling that ball on an on inch line. So it's just a matter of the confidence is, is real and it's it's earned. So yes. Did you expect that? That's a perfect way to end. I totally agree. It's it's earned, and it's earned through through victories, pulling them out of situations where you could have been on the wrong side of it. When you leave this game with a victory, Damian, the way it came against a, a, a very worthy opponent, how does that? I don't want to say change the, the, your expectation, but but how does it establish sort of a belief in who you are right now as you try to do it again? Well, listen, it, it, you know, as far as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, they went up against a, a high-powered offense, mm -hmm. and they were able to, you know, squeak away with a victory. Are they going to be satisfied with that? Absolutely not. You know, they're going to – I'm sure Todd Bowles is not satisfied with the way that Dak Prescott carved them up. But at the end of the day, Scott, a win is a win. You're the Super Bowl – you're the reigning Super Bowl champs. You're able to come away with a win against a quality opponent in the Dallas Cowboys. That's all that matters at the end of the day. There were so many opportunities for the Bucs to give up in that game. I reckon Brady's influence last season really toughened everyone up. So in these back and forth matches, and it's a battle of will and attrition, Brady's taught the Bucks how to finish. And I'm with Woody. I don't care if they win by one or 100. A win is a win. What do you guys think? Yeah, we, we got to keep improving it. And that's the reality. It's a lot of games come down to two minute on both sides of the football. Came down to the offense tonight. Um, you know, we needed to get out there and, and do something for the team to help us win. And we got to put ourselves in a position, and then Ryan made the kick. So that makes it uh, really good when the ball goes through the uprights. So. What's it like uh, kicking that field goal again in front of a, a sold-out crowd and, and, and having that moment? Yeah, it was special. Um, you know, last year we, we didn't have too many games. I mean, we, you know, we had some fans, but it wasn't like tonight. And, uh, you know, season opener, our, our fans were great. Uh, we, you know, we have awesome fans here in Tampa. And that's uh, something I'm really thankful for. And, uh, you know, to get to do this in front of them on opening night, um, it was really special. It's something I'll, I'll remember for a long time. When there's a minute and a half left and you see 12 Tron out there, do you just kind of know you're going to get a chance to kick that, that up? Yeah, I, I was pretty certain we were going to have a chance. Um, you know, obviously, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. He's the greatest player of all time. And um, he's so calm, so collected. Um, you know, his poise, I think it, it it permeates everybody. And everybody goes out and plays better because of him. And, um, you know, credit to our offense. Our coaches put us in a great position, went right down the field. Uh, great two-minute drill. And, um, you know, we were able to have a small part at the end of it. But, um, yeah, it was, it was really cool. That's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. Thanks for watching.